I'm a professor of English, but my PhD is in psychology. And as a psychologist, I know that no question we can imagine, no answer we can begin to fathom is any better than our consciousness, because our consciousness is the only tool we have ultimately to know. And every one of us in this room knows that human consciousness plays tricks on us. So gentlemen, my question for you is, how do we know, even that we're asking a legitimate question, more or less, that you are providing us with true answers? Dr. Craig? Well, I think that depends on what your tests for truth are. And here I think I would agree with what Vic Stinger said in his opening speech, is that we will use reason and logic coupled with observation to uh, construct our arguments and to test for the truth of the conclusions. Uh, a good argument for a conclusion must be logically valid. That is to say, it has to follow the rules of logic. And then the premises must be true. And in, if the premises are true and the argument is logical, then the conclusion is established as true. So I think what Vic Stinger said was reason and logic coupled with observation will be our guide to truth. Vic, can you tell me why our question is good and your answer is correct? Well, I, I, since he agrees with me, that's, uh, <laughs> that's fine. But I think it has to, one, of, one of the problems with, with logic is, of course, every, everything that you conclude is already there in the premises. So if, if you're hiding the premise that God exists, then you can come to no other conclusion except God exists, and, and, and vice versa. And that's why we've come in, in, in science uh, to rely on empirical facts, and in particular the ability of, of the theories that we developed to make some kind of prediction, provide some kind of observation that could be testable. This is why I tried to provide two such ones, the case of Revelation and the case of, uh, of prayer. These, these are phenomena that could be tested scientifically and have been tested scientifically okay. and, and provide no uh, evidence. So, Dr. Craig, your first question for Dr. Stenger. Um, well, it's difficult to know where to begin. Um, I guess uh, let's start with your arguments against God's existence, which you claim attain to certainty. Um, I challenged you to provide for me or for us some sort of clear argument to show that these attributes of God are, in fact, incompatible with each other. Can you actually do that for us? Well, of course, you made assertions that they weren't, that I think were equally uh, un, uh, uh, filled out in any kind of, of detail. You, you just basically try to tell me that, that uh, theologians have solved the problem. Well, they haven't solved the problem in my mind. I don't see how you can reconcile, uh, uh, for example, perfection and and the creator, and uh, there have been any number of other All right, well, give me the that. argument for that, to show that perfection and being a creator are, are logically incompatible with each other. Well, I, if you're perfect, if God is perfect, then he has no needs or wants. Cre a creator creates the universe for a divine purpose. That implies that he has something that he doesn't want. Okay, and I would disagree with that premise. Okay. The, the, I suggested that the reason he could create wouldn't be for any sort of a divine need or, or a lack, but rather it would be for the benefit of the creature. Could we pause here and go back to our originally agreed upon format? Dr. Stenger, do you have a question oh, for Dr. Okay. Stenger? <laughs> okay. All right. How can you rely on the Bible as a, a source of morality? Because you're claiming that we get our morality from God, and presumably you, you, the Word of God is, is in the Bible, when there's uh, so much in it that we, we would consider immoral, that a humanist like myself would consider immoral. The, uh, the Old Testament in particular has many instances of, of 
of rape, of slavery, of murder condoned by God. And even the New Testament, I think, is a bit immoral when Jesus uh, says, you have, to, you have to follow me or else you burn in hell uh, eternally. I don't consider that a very high moral code to uh, live up to. All right, two things I think could be said here. First of all, I wasn't using the Bible as an argument for morality. What I said was that if there isn't any God, then objective moral values don't exist. They're just the sociobiological uh, spin-off of human evolution. Uh, but that I think objective values do exist. We sense that uh, in moral experience that things like raping a little child, torturing a child for fun, uh, are wrong. And in your speech, you agreed with the first premise. You said there is no evidence for objective morality, that this can just be objectively, uh, exp uh, naturally explained. So the, the, the humanist cannot indict the Bible for being immoral because the, the uh, naturalist agrees that there isn't any evidence for objective morality. So the, the minute he starts to indict the, the, the Bible as being immoral, he's presupposing a standard of morality to which uh, the Bible has to, to measure up, which so, contradicts your your. No, I, I, I argued, I, I allowed for the possibility that objective morality exists, something that we all agree upon. No, no, that's uh, not what objective means. Remember, I said objective means something that's valid and binding independently of whether anybody agreed upon it or not. For example, say to say the Holocaust was objectively wrong, means that it was wrong even if the Nazis had won World War II and brainwashed or exterminated everybody who disagreed with them so that everybody thought the Holocaust was good. But to say the Holocaust is objectively wrong means that it's wrong independently of whether anybody thinks so or not. And I think many theists and atheists agree that without God, then morality isn't objective in that way. And I thought that's what you were agreeing in. Your well, I just, I just don't see where in any, in any way or form of anything you've said uh, requires that uh, that God uh, is necessary for objective morality, even if obje objective morality exists. I don't see why it can't be uh, uh, something that's developed uh, through the evolution of, of the human species. Well, very okay. simply, pause again. Well, Dr. Stenger, do you have a question for Dr. Craig? Okay. Is there any kind of evidence? I mean, you're, you're, you know, I, you uh, are a Christian and you, you work very hard to show that uh, the Christian God is, is, uh, is compatible with, with logic and, and with, with observation. I was just wondering if, if there was any evidence that would cause you to change your mind. If there's something, some, like I've given you one, I've given one example uh, of something that would convince me, such as, a, such as the Bible or some other yeah. uh, sort of, revealed source had come up with something that was testable, uh, I think that uh, I could come around to believe. What about something well, that would cause you to uh, change your view on belief? I think that the tact that you took in your arguments was a good one, that if you could show that the attributes of God are in fact self-contradictory, you're absolutely right, then such a being doesn't exist. Or if you could show that God cannot have morally sufficient reasons for permitting the suffering in the world, I'd have to give up belief in God. So I think that those arguments are, are on the right track. I just don't think they're successful arguments. Uh, if you could show me that Jesus of Nazareth didn't rise from the dead, if archaeologists found, you know, the, the bone box of Jesus, uh, then one would have to give up being a Christian. So Christianity or Christian theism is very much... Um, it gets its hands dirty in the world. It, it's not a religion that is ethereal and removed from the from falsification in the world. It, it's it's it, God's fingerprints are all over this universe, I think. And if you could show, for example, that his attributes are self-contradictory or that he couldn't have reasons for permitting evil or that Jesus didn't rise from the dead, you'd have to give up Christian theism. Yes. 